Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth. I'm Anthony Hill. And this is Through the Eyes of an Elder's Discussions, and we're happy that you could join us here today. And we basically kind of try to dive into different kinds of scriptures um, and try to extract things from there to help us in our walk, in our faith with Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. And we're praying and hoping that it blesses you as well. Um, sometimes things are not quite as evident as when you read the scriptures on the surface. So it's our goal and our desire and our passion to try to bring the deeper meaning of this out, especially in these times, Anthony, because in these times, Satan is becoming quite crafty. And there, there's something interesting, and we're going to start with the opening comments now. I'll just start real quick. Um, what I'm noticing is, is that there's kind of like two groups of people that I see as far as in the faith. Uh -huh. And the one is the ones that are on fire are keen to Satan's devices. And they have been kind of trained at how tricky and crafty he can really be. And so their senses have been fine-tuned to be able to pick up when things are happening to them to know how to counteract that and rely on Yahshua to step in and help them instead of allowing their flesh to come out. And then you have the other group of people who are walking in Yahshua, but they're doing it in a very kind of lackadaisical, casual kind of way. Yes. And when trouble comes, they run. You know, and when they run, unfortunately, if you don't stand and face the enemy and conquer him on your ground, he takes the ground away from you. And so the whole point of this is uh, this message today, this discussions today is trying to understand how Satan sets us up for failure so that we can be prepared because we're not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. That's the title of today's topic that you chose. Yes. And he has lots of tools in which he does that. And so I know it's your desire as well as mine today to bring out some scriptures that will shed a little more light on this and bring out maybe a deeper meaning. And then hopefully you can use this to reflect in your own life. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you people out there, things are getting harder. And I know people out there know it's getting harder. Oh, yes. It's getting more difficult. And the devil is getting more crafty on how he's coming at us. So it behooves all of us to be on guard or these days are going to catch you, like Yahshua says, as a thief in the night. Yes. And do you really want to find yourself in that place? Do you really, you know, I say to myself, I've been doing this for almost 40 years now. The last thing I can think of that would be the most humiliating thing for me is to fight all these battles I've fought in over all these years, these spiritual wars to this point, and then at the last minute, you throw it away. Oh, yes. That would be so humiliating because, you know, from a carnal perspective, I there's many other things I could have done in my life beside follow this way. I could have had more fun in the world and just stay in my ignorance. But, you know, it is our hope that, as we're going to bring out in the scriptures, is that you people are the bride-to-be. Many of you are the bride-to-be. And it's time to start waking up and understanding that you can't take this lightly anymore and that the devil is on a warpath and he wants to destroy all of Yahweh's chosen. That's you. And it's important that you understand that and you integrate that into your daily life and not take it for granted as if like it, well, it, maybe it means it for somebody else. Everything is going good for me. Well, maybe it is going good for you now, but it's going to start turning pretty soon because mm -hmm. the devil's angry and he's coming down to Yahweh's people and he wants to put an end to this whole thing. We're coming into these end times. And so uh, that's kind of what I want to do to kind of set up today's message from my perspective of what I was thinking about, not being ignorant of his devices. So I kind of want to turn it over to you now and get your thoughts on this. Uh, praise Yahweh through Yeshua. HaMashiach, as always, it's a blessing to have the discussion. I won't, I won't um, prolong this little statement, but I just want to speak on an experience that I'm experiencing, um, how that Yahweh, through these discussions that we're having, has uh, opened a window for me to look out of. 
And as I look through that out of that window, I can see me outside of the window all entangled in the different snares that this life can bring in on you. And what he's revealed to me is, uh, we read it every week, you know, in our prayers. Uh, even the Siddur that we read has these prayers, and they always talk about how merciful Yahweh is. And I'm looking back through these different discussions that we've been having, including this one that we're going to have today, is he just shows me just how merciful he was to me, you know, and how his long suffering and his loving kindness towards those that call upon him is always there. And for me, it it's waking me up to kind of keep me, I, I pray daily for humility. And these scriptures are really humbling because I just see how good he has been for me, to me, and how merciful he's been to me. And I'm praying, this is my hope, that so many more people just can see the goodness of Yahweh manifested itself in his life while they were yet sinners. And so I'm ready to get this thing rolling and get it on the ball. So, sir, it's back over to you. Okay. So, you know, as I'm listening to you, um, something struck me just real quick. After we go through these scriptures today, mm -hmm. if these scriptures, as we bring them out, as we usually do, uh, don't alarm you and don't make you become reflective or inflective within yourself to see where you fit in all this and it doesn't scare the living daylights out of you, you're in a whole lot of trouble. Yes. You're in a whole lot of trouble because what that tells me is you are well on your way to your conscience being seared with a hot iron mm -hmm. to where you can't feel anymore. And that's an extremely dangerous place to be, especially during these days that we're coming into now oh, when yeah. everybody's being forced to submit their free will and their rights over to the legal authorities and give up their sovereignty. And this is just like I said a year ago in the, one of the other videos, this is where it was going to go and this is where we are now. Only it's a whole lot deeper now than it was then. Mm -hmm. And another year from now, it's going to be a whole lot worse than this. Yeah. So at some point, you got to wake up and start realizing, I can't play this game anymore. I've got to get right. I've got to get serious. Because we know from the scriptures that Yahweh at some point is going to have the woman wake up mm -hmm. and she's going to have to start repenting and getting rid of her other lovers. So anyway, without any further ado, we've gotten through our opening comments. So as we, I said earlier, are you ignorant of Satan's devices? That is the question. Are you ignorant? And this is only just a small, um, a small way to look at this. There's just so many different ways mm -hmm. uh, that Satan can get to us in our life. And you're not going to win them all initially. But right. like you said, there's grace and Yahweh has mercy and compassion and he can deliver you out of the ones that you're not so smart about. But the whole point is, hopefully you learn through that so that the next time he comes around, he tries to play the, the same game. You're on to it. Exactly. You know, you're on to it. Yes. You know, yes. so you picked on we're going to go through three points here today. And on point number one. You came up with Genesis chapter 38, verse 24 through 36. Mm -hmm. Genesis 38, 24 for, through 26. And what I got out of this is transference of authority lets you reap what you sow. Yes. So in other words, don't complain about what you allow. Mm -hmm. You and you alone have to own up to what you gave up. Mm -hmm. So when calamity comes on you, you have no one to blame but yourself. So hopefully you'll see the same thing that we see out of this. And so I'll go ahead and read this and then I'm going to throw it over to you and get your thoughts on how you want to um, talk about what you saw in these scriptures. It says in verse 24, and it came to pass about three months of new moons after that Judah was told, saying, Tamar, your daughter-in-law has played the harlot. Furthermore, she is the child of harlotry. From idolatry. So Judah said, bring her out uh, and let her be burned. Mm -hmm. So clearly judgment is in order yes. uh, for this, this lawless act. 
verse 25, when she uh, was brought out, she sent to her father-in-law saying, by the man of whom these belong, I am with child. And she said, please determine by intently looking at and scrutinizing whose these are, the signet, which is a seal, and cord as a twine bracelet, and staff of a tribe for chastening and correction. That one got my attention. Yeah. Okay. Because there's a lot in there about that. Mm -hmm. So Judah acknowledged in verse 26 by intently looking at and scrutinizing them and said she has been more righteous and clean than I because I did not give her to Shela, my son, and he never knew her again. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? Baruch Hashem. For me, when I was when um I believe Yahweh gave me this as an example, it's people who have been put into authority. Today they call themselves pastors or rabbis, but they're more like a shepherd, like a Moses with the staff in their hand. And the staff is to keep people corrected, or to have Amen. uh to be a protector mm -hmm. of the people. Mm -hmm. And it was so many different things uh, that came out to me, but I'll just uh, use two examples. In the, in the military, when I was there in leadership, they they teach two basic things that help you develop yourself as a leader. You know, and, and uh, one of them was seek responsibilities and take responsibilities for your actions, and the other was to set standards and maintain those standards. Yahweh has done both and has uh, enabled us through the Ruach, through Yeshua, to maintain those, those uh, right. gifts that he's given us. But a lot of us, we like to give the gift over. And so we secretly go and do things by not even stopping to recognize because we've up there now as we discussed in the Korra film, how quickly you can get mm. above yourself mm. and then take on the authority and, and the uh, judgment upon yourself to towards others and not even perceive it within yourself. It's, it's more examples through the scripture, even with uh, our father, King David, was the, in the same mindset as Judah was. Right away, judgment comes in. Until you find out, oh, I'm that guilty person. So how condemnable are you on yourself versus on another? You know, how merciful <coughs> was he when he found out that, oh, the punishment that was for them really should be for me. And so Judah right on point you have to give him the um applaud him really right, right um because most people would say that's not mine and still try to cover it up further so the righteousness that was still within judah to um exemplify uh bring out itself to me was a uh how would you say it it wasn't an example how I should be. An you act know? of humility. Yes. Yeah. It, it, you should humble yourself and say, oh, man, I was so quick. It, and it, I for, how quick did I forget about the it, wrong that know, I did? You know, uh, also what's striking me about what you're saying is imagine being in his position. Mm -hmm. OK, he's a leader. And yet. You're having to humble yourself to a, 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 a prostitute. And admit she's more clean than you. Exactly. Wow. I mean, if that doesn't mess with your values in your head, but you have to be pretty objective and humble person to make that kind of an, a statement. Exactly. Because you shouldn't vow and not keep the vow, mm -hmm. you know. And so this this thing started out with a vow. And and um, along the way, she was more clever than he was. Yes. You know, okay, if you're going to uh, deceive me, now it's my turn to deceive you. Ah, uh, good point. And, and right, so right, right. so we have to watch out uh -huh. about the, the, the trickery that Satan uses to draw us in uh, uh, by not saying, by not thinking that we know more than what we know. 
always the uh, scriptures say, <laughs> be be slow to speak and quick to hear. Yeah. Slow to speak and quick to hear. Judah tried to hide his stuff away and he tried to send back and pick and, and retrieve his stuff so that stuff will never be found. But scripture don't lie. Say, be sure your sin will find you out. And we yeah. today, we don't think about these things because we say, uh, well, it's widely taught that, oh, Yeshua uh, grace is sufficient, you know, so I can sin and I can just repent and it'll be over with. It's so far from the truth. It's <coughs> going to bring you out. If it don't bring consequences, the, the very thing it should bring is embarrassment. That will bring you to your knees and to repent. Is that not a law? Mm -hmm. You know, because there's consequences. You only have consequences if you have a law. Right. So obviously some sort of a law was violated, and that's why it brought a consequence on him. It's, but he took it humbly mm -hmm. rather than letting his flesh rise up and try to justify what he did or hide it or conceal it or something kind of way like that. And he couldn't lie because it was his sickness. <laughs> It was his staff, <laughs> and everybody knew it was his. Yeah, right. So he had to concede. Right. But was he going to condemn himself and burn himself and say, well, burn me? Right. No, he was going to forgive himself. Right. So he was forced to forgive her. Right. You know, but how many of us don't do that? You know, how many? will just, oh, I'm going to forgive my, my, my I'm going to have mercy on my mistake or my transgression. But your transgression, since um, you really don't know about mine, I can conceal mine. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have mercy on yours, right, right. you know. And it, it's all, it's so much scripture to it. I don't want to belabor this, but right. that's really what he was showing me. Humility through your authority. Care for the people that he's put you in mm -hmm. charge of. Really care for them like, like he cares for the sheep. Yeshua, David said, Yeshua is my shepherd. You know, he the one that leads me. Lead them where they know that they're going down the right path. Don't deceive your people. Have a heart for the people like Yeshua has a heart for us. Yeah, that's pretty hard nowadays because most people I find are what I would say apathetic. Mm -hmm. You know, people write to me and stuff and, you know, I write back to them as soon as I can. I'm quite busy, but, you know, I write back uh, for the most part, unless I miss somebody. And I would say almost without exception, they never respond. And you got to sit and you got to think, well, what was the whole point of writing in the first place? You know, right. but, I, you know, I think that's just the condition of the body of Messiah today. I think there's a part of them that wants what they know they should be seeking. But at the same time, the devil is holding them back. Mm hmm. And this whole series that, that we're doing is all about enlightening the body of Messiah to say, listen, man, you know, how long are you going to praise this game as this whoring wife that's apathetic and just doesn't want to get off the pot, if I could use that vernacular? Right. You know, right. either go or stay. One or the other, do mm -hmm. something, you know, but just don't sit there. And you know you're playing the game. Right. You know you're playing the game. You're not fooling anybody. Right. You know? And it's like I tell people, I said, do you really think you're so smart that people who know better can't see through the the fog that you're trying to create, the facade, you know? Because it's just leaking out of you. It's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a whole kind of another story. Yeah. But that's a deception in itself that Satan uses so that the person can stay where they are. Mm -hmm. So... When I read these scriptures, um, this set here, what I got out of it, Judah was not able to correct Tamar mm -hmm. as he lost his scepter, which means he lost his, his authority. authority. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to now bring a few scriptures out that complement the concept of what you brought out um, so that people can better understand from a little more of a New Testament perspective what the consequences are um, either way when um you break this this rule mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. you, you know we know that Yahshua said just to give one um don't lose your crown right the devil wants to take your crown and he wants to hand it to somebody else yes he do so if you lose your crown it's nobody's fault but your own mm -hmm. it's not like you're ignorant you were told up front you were told what the name of the game was how it's to be played 
And when the end comes, if you lost your crown, you got nobody to argue with except for yourself. And you can't blame the devil because the devil knows the game. You know the game. You know, that's just what happens. So I'm going to show in Revelation chapter 2 through uh, verses 25 through 27, guarding the little you have now affords a much larger reward later. Mm -hmm. Guarding the little that you have now affords a much re uh, much larger reward later. Mm -hmm. So in other words, to whom much, uh, to little has been given, I'm sorry, to much has been given, much is required. Right. And everything's relative in life when it comes to that. But in verse 25, it says, but hold fast and guard from loss or injury what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps by guarding from loss or injury my works until the end, to him I will give power and privilege of superhuman delegated influence over the nations that are pagan and non-Jewish. That's a pretty awesome reward to have. Mm -hmm. No politician on this earth even has that kind of authority. Can you imagine having that kind of authority? But it says we're going to be kings and priests in the mm -hmm. kingdom. Mm -hmm. You are qualifying for a position in the kingdom if you hold fast to the works that he give you to hold fast to. Yes. Verse 27. He shall rule as a tending shepherd of them with a rod of iron that is a baton of royalty. They shall be dashed into pieces like potter's vessels of earthen clay, as I also have received from my father. Any thoughts? It, it's just like you you said, but I, in this way, um, I think he says, he that is faithful over little will be faithful mm -hmm. over much. It's what do you appreciate what you have? How much do you, how thankful are you are for what he's given us? And he's given us a lot. He's laid his life down that we can have life. So do we, do we walk this walk in vain? Do we walk it to his shame? I mean, if you got this staff in your hand, if you're a shepherd over people, life, not, not just over a congregation in your own home in your own home you right. know mm -hmm. on your job if you're a leader are you leading righteously are you leading uh professionally are you doing things the right way or are you taking these shortcuts because temptation comes from every area you know i'm still got judah in my mind he's going on a trip but right away on the midst of his trip, like many of you read about today, all these businessmen go on these trips and they want to hire the harlot. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Right. It's like he want to hire a harlot on his way. Maybe this is where this concept come from that we still deal with today. Who knows? But I'm saying if you're walking a righteous walk, don't turn into her as King Solomon walked because her bed is full of dead man bones. Hmm. Don't get it. Don't get your scepter taken away from you. Yeah. And it's um, it's easy for that to happen when you're ignorant mm -hmm. of Satan's devices. Yes. Don't ever think you're smarter than him. Oh, no. You know, don't ever think you're smarter than him. Um, you know, going back to Tamar a bit. So in scripture, women who wear a veil mm -hmm. are synonymous with being a harlot. harlot. Right. So it's interesting in the Shemitic world how Arab women wear the a veil. scar, a right. veil. Mm -hmm. Now, you can argue where did that come from, but the whole point is it's an ancient culture. Mm -hmm. uh, but in biblical times, that's what it means. But I kind of want to bring it forward just as kind of a little side note right now about the deception. And I was, you know, meditating on this and Yahweh kind of showed me a little picture about it. So today we have this face diaper that we're told we have to wear. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but to wonder in some kind of a way if that covering of your face is also a sign that you've been given over to harlotry, to a system that's trying to influence you to do the wrong things, to follow an ideology that is not right. So much so that I see people who 
oppress other people who don't do it because they're angry because they're not wearing this face covering, okay, with this whole pandemic that we got going on. And so there's a war between these two factions, between the ones that feel that they're righteous by wearing this diaper face mask, okay, and the ones that don't. And so I'm like, people just giving in so easy to that without questioning the science on it. And it's not, you know, it's not my point to be political. I'm just trying to bring out about the idea of how easy it is to be dragged into something that seems like it's for the right reason, but it's actually for the wrong reason. Okay. So like a lot of these diaper masks, you know, they're made with Teflon and PCBs, which are known to be cancer causing in the lungs. And you're inhaling those particles all day long. Just to mention that as a aside. So are you in the end, my point is when you give over to something so easy without questioning it, and you're being duped by uh, an organization or or a person, or it doesn't matter what it is in this life, to succumb to this oppressive authority on you to make you give in without questioning it. Have you not caused yourself a problem? in many different ways. And so that's kind of what I see with this thing with Tamar in a way, in a kind of different way, but a similar way, she was acting as a harlot to seduce Judah to get involved in a situation without him realizing what he was actually being seduced into. And so this comes back to the craftiness mm -hmm of what the spirits are doing in the spiritual realm. They do it in the religious realm. They do it in the secular realm. They do it in the financial realm. They do it in the human relationship realm and the governmental realm, all these different realms. We're all being bombarded by deceptions all the time. And so I think we've now come to a place in history where you really better start sitting down and asking yourself some very important questions. When somebody's telling you you have to do something, don't be so quick to grab onto it. Make sure you consult with Messiah first and see what he says about it. Mm -hmm. Because the decision you make could be the decision that destroys your life in the end. And I know people where that's happened to them because they made a rash decision, not questioning the source of what was seducing them to get involved in something they shouldn't have gotten involved in, and they lost their life. Yeah. I, I always say, um, when I'm talking to people, I say, just look how I see stuff through my eyes. You know, just to uh, reiterate a little bit on you from a different perspective through eyes. And I was, I was telling the person, I say, I don't really get involved into the decision-making processes people do, but I say, I will ask that person that goes to the doctor and have an arm or a leg cut off to live. When you making a statement, we got to die or something. Why would you cut your foot off? Why would you cut your leg off? To that ones who put the ports in them to get the chemotherapy, if you're going to die from something, why put, why put that poison in you? Just go ahead and die. So when, when it comes to a question of... Or put your faith in Yahshua. Yeah, if you're going to believe in you. him to heal you, then that's what you do. But if you're going to say, oh, he can heal me through this process or through that process, and that's your faith, that's your faith. But... um. When you're looking through other people's fears and the decisions they make in those fears to run to a doctor for anything, for them to put you on any kind of pill that's not going to heal you, that's, that's saying to that person, that's what he's hoping for his life. But um, for life eternal, it's a different kind of faith we have to mm -hmm. possess. Um, it's not the faith to stay here. We just strangers in this land. Right. We passing through. It's nothing going to keep us here but the word of Yahweh. And so if we're going to be against this stuff and we're going to talk about it, then we need to get rid of doctors and hospitals and medicines. 
if we're looking through somebody else's eyes, because I know people that will not go to a doctor. I know people that won't get blood transfusions or give anybody blood. I actually know that, but can I call it demonic or not? I, I'm not, that's their faith. It's, a, it's on their judgment and their call. But I'm always trying to look through other sets of eyes um, because Judah wasn't looking through Tamara's eyes of how she felt betrayed. He was only seeing he had the power to do this and not to do that. That's not what we should be doing as believers. We should right. not take our power as an opportunity to take advantage over people. And mm -hmm. that's, I think that's the bottom line teachings of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. uh, be careful how you remove the moat out of somebody else's eye when you got a beam in your own eye. We really have to be careful because it can turn around and, and question you about something you may not be doing the exact same thing, but you might be doing something that they don't uh, particularly believe in or do. You know, that might be right along the same right? Is that possible? You know, and so I I, I tend to try to, I, I stay on the examination table. I'll put it like that. And like I was telling you, um, these discussions, they really are scary to me because the things that are happening here, they're happening to people that have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so we're in this society today, we're so quick to judge outside, but nobody's inside the house mm -hmm. judging, uh, making uh, corrections inside the house, but we'll go outside the house. Uh, I read some of the most divorced uh, people in the world are those that are in the face. Yes. Where did this come from when we're so against it? And there are leaders, there are bishops and rabbis and everything that have divorced and remarried. I'm talking about saying they got mm -hmm. the, the, the knowledge to do so. And this is what I want people to be aware of because this stuff scared me once I came in to see the attitude of people that, man, the stuff that scared you to run away from it's you running right into it and they telling you it's okay. Well, what was the purpose of me coming over here if I was all right doing it over there? Mm -hmm. That's 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 it on that. Yeah, yeah. Um point well taken. Uh and by the way, we're not giving medical advice. Right, right, right. right. We're not doctors, we're not giving medical right. advice. Spiritual advice. That's it. That's it. Uh it we only say these things so that people can ponder mm -hmm. that it's not always as cut and dry. Yeah is you would like to make it. And then by no means am I trying to condemn somebody mm -hmm. if they decide to do, right. you know, face covering or whatever. All I'm just simply saying is things may be a little more deeper mm -hmm. than perhaps you've given it credit for. Because exactly. after all this is, are you ignorant of Satan's devices? Mm -hmm. Do you really know what's behind what got you to make the decision that you made? To go along with whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Yes. That's the point. Yes. Okay. So uh, in point two, uh, you brought up Judges chapter 16, verse 16 through 18. And what I got out of this was negative pressure to conform is a sign. Mm -hmm. Negative pressure to conform is a sign. Yes. And all of us have been in situations where some sort of a force or authority has exuded an, an enormous amount of pressure on you to make your spirit like cringe up inside. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting out of this is when you feel this oppression within your spirit, that's a sign that something's wrong. Mm -hmm. That this negative pressure, assuming it's not coming from Yahweh for something you've really done wrong, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when Satan is coming and he wants you to succumb to this pressure that's coming on you. When you feel that, that's a sign it's coming from a source you need to recognize. Mm -hmm. And you need to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and read in Judges 16 through 18. It says, and it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her. This is talking about Samson. Right. Um, 
her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed with much discouragement unto death. Now, this is not something you would think about as Samson. Uh -uh. This is a guy who carried the gates of the city, I estimate, somewhere between 16 and 20 miles. Uh -huh. He carried the gates of the city, and they couldn't kill him. <laughs> and that's because if you understand blood covenant, mm -hmm. threshold covenant law, mm -hmm. you know, even back then they, resp they respected that. So when he came to the gates of the city... He knew what they wanted to do. So as long as he picked up the gates of the city and he stayed in that threshold, he was protected by the gates of the city. And he walked all the way. I, maybe I'll put it in the video uh, on the map to show how far he walked mm -hmm. to a hill. Mm -hmm. Looking at Hebron, I think it was. Um, I think that's where it was. I don't remember exactly, but I'll see if I can put it in. And uh, can you imagine walking with the gates of the city? And all these guys are around you. They want to kill you and they can't kill you. You know, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. But anyway, my point is, is that you don't think in terms of a woman vexing a big guy like this with this much power that he wants to die. Mm -hmm. But you know what Solomon said? It's better for a man to dwell on the roof of his house than inside the house with a nagging wife. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I think all men can empathize with that one. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, or the other one, what does it say? Um, uh, the nagging of a wife is like a continual dripping of a faucet of water. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Solomon, he's too much. All right, verse 17, let's get back to this. Mm -hmm. That he told up front and boldly her all his heart mm -hmm. and said to her, no razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite, as a consecrated prince like, as an unpruned vine, that's mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. in the Hebrew, to Elohim from my mother's womb. I, If I am shaven, bald as laid to waste, then my strength of firmness and vigor will leave me, and I shall become weak and worn down with affliction like any other man. When Delilah lag, uh, languishly with feebleness and oppression, which is interesting, mm -hmm. Because she's oppressing him, which means she has an oppressing spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he finally gave in to this. Saw that, you know, he wasn't giving in to all the warriors that want to kill him, but he gives in to a woman that's got a spirit of oppression. Uh -huh. Which goes back to what I was saying in the beginning. This negative force coming on you, you got to be careful about yes. it. Yes. Saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the Lord's of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all in his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up uh, to her and brought the money in their hands. So your thoughts? Uh, Oh, man. <laughs> this one was like just wrapping me around in so much because I can remember uh, before I came into the faith how we would, as men, we would pray on the women that went to church mm. huh? and we would pressure them and we would throw money at them and everything Were you in the church? Pay bills. No, nope. you weren't in the church. Uh, -uh. And it's just the same way. Samson is in a faith, but Delilah is right, in a totally right. different place. She's, she's, uh, 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 so question, what did you see about the woman in the church that was desirable? Okay. They supposed to be in some, something good. You know, uh, uh, decent. did you want something that was good or did you want something uh -uh. to prove that it prove wasn't that good. it wasn't <laughs> that they can be they can be uh, tempted Pat. and taken. Yeah. Yeah. There's no they are no different than, a than I am. It was a challenge. And yeah. so that's what the sinner does. That's what yeah. Satan is. He's got people to try us continually, try us to prove that we're no different. And what do they see? I'm telling you, when I came into the faith, I saw the same thing going on. What was going on in the world I was in? And like, it's no different. What's the difference? You know, and you got some people out there that will fight to hold on yeah, to yeah. their integrity. Right, right. There are some. There are some. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying everybody is weak, but Samson was a strong person. So if it can happen to a strong man, don't think that we're so strong it can't break us. You uh, um, you understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And and so when I'm 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 reading this stuff, it's taking me back to where I was. I wanted to come out of that life so bad. 
I didn't know how. It, it couldn't, nothing that had happened to me humbled me enough to really say, man, this is really wrong. I need, I need, I need to do something different. My mouth would say it, but those same temptations would be there to say, oh, I got you in trouble again. You know, and there I am. I'm caught by my wife again doing the same thing that I, I said I wouldn't do. And I'm defeated until you find that you're in a place where you lost all. How many people out there have left off of this, this first love, have cast this mm -hmm. love off and have lost it all? And you're out there thinking that there's no way you can get it back. Change that mindset. You have not gone too far from the arm of Yahweh. His arm can come and get you from wherever you've fallen. I am a living witness of that. I, I, I wasn't on this side. But I was on a side that was hearing the voice that you can never get over there. You can never get in that place. But look at me. There's nothing too hard for Yahweh. And that's what I'm seeing in, 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 in um, the example he's given me through Samson. Not through his actions, but through the fact that once I uh, rescue you, know that it wasn't an easy task. Know that it was hard. So don't give it up so easily. Make a person fight to get this treasure out of you. It's a treasure inside of us. Uh, well, here, you know what I'm thinking is in this, this scenario here. Uh -huh. Yeah, what you're saying, I, I get that. But I think in Samson's case, I don't think there was enough fighting he could do to ward it off. And, I, and the reason why I say that is because all of us have sometimes a very hidden weakness mm -hmm. that we haven't identified or maybe we have identified it, but we don't give it significance. And when you don't give something significance that you should give significance and attention to, that's your downfall. Exactly. And uh, the other day we were talking, and this is why I'm bringing it back, is mm -hmm. because you had correctly said he had a weakness for a, a particular woman. Mm -hmm. When the mother and father told him, why do you got to go to the Philistines? Are there not enough women in Israel that you can't have? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. are they all ugly? You know, <laughs> is there not one pretty one over here that you can go after? <laughs> My wife shaking her head at me like, oh, there he goes. You know, <laughs> but. The point is, he had his eye on that one. Uh -huh. But she had an oppressing spirit. So when he made a covenant with her, you know, when you have a consummation, a sexual agreement with another person, man or woman, um, there's a trade-off in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. They get a little bit of you and you get a little bit of them. But if they happen to have something in them, that has more authority over you than you have over them, you're in a whole lot of trouble. And I think that's why that spirit was oppressing Samson so much because like it had control die. over him. Mm -hmm. He wanted to die. If he didn't give in to it, he was going to die. He's going to die. Mm -hmm. So, Like that junkie with the fix. Yeah, exactly. If I don't get this fix, I'm going to die. You're right. And she and he knew that she wasn't going to leave him alone. Mm -hmm. And she was going to put the guilt on, the mm -hmm. Philistine guilt. You say you love me, but you won't tell me nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. So the point here is, is that it's self-deception now. Mm -hmm. And Satan uses our self-deception or our denial about what a weakness we have. Why are we drawn to this so much? Mm -hmm. Why is it so compulsory? I've got to have that. You know, once you get into that realm, and it's for the wrong reason I'm saying, then we're asking for a whole lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And that becomes our downfall. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking. So that kind of led me to mm -hmm. bring up in Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 8 through 9, willing to take the pressure. Are yeah. you willing to take the pressure? <laughs> now, Delilah might have been fine, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And that's a pressure unto itself. Mm -hmm. But can you stand up against that? Right. You know, especially if you have a predisposition to have a weakness for it. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is what I got out of this set of scriptures in Ezekiel 
chapter 3, verse 8 through 9. So we'll read, Behold, I have made your face strong, loud and violent mm. against their faces, loud and violent against their foreheads, like an adamant that is pricking and a, uh, a scraving stone harder than flint that is used as a knife. I have made your forehead. Do not be afraid of them, nor be dismayed. Break down or prostrate yourself at their looks, though they are a rebellious from a bitterness of that house. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what Yahweh was saying to Ezekiel is, I know that you live among serpents and scorpions. I won't bring that scripture up, but that's what he's telling them. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua says, I have given you power over serpents and scorpions. In other words, there's going to be people around you that pretend to be believers. And maybe they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they're rooting for the wrong side. Mm -hmm. And their job and responsibility by Satan, because they're weak and they're living through their own desires, come to you. And they want to chew you out for the stances that you take for righteousness because mm -hmm. they want to lure you over to their side. Exactly. So what Yahweh is telling them is, I know you dwell in a place like that. But Yahshua said, I've given you power over serpents and scorpions. He's not mm -hmm. talking about snakes and scorpions. Mm -hmm. He's talking about fellow believers or fellow Israelites mm -hmm. who claim to be believers, but they're rebellious house. Mm -hmm. And they don't like what you stand for. And so if you're going to stand for something, understand, like I said from the beginning, will you take the pressure? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to take the pressure? If you're not, like they used to say in our day, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So if you can't stand the heat, you got to get out of this thing. Yeah. Go roll under the rock where you came from. And don't come out if you're that afraid. Because mm -hmm. we're entering the times now, Anthony, that you're going to have to have some kind of boldness. Yes. You're going to have to have some kind of boldness because the devil's coming after all of us in different kinds of ways with these strategies that he has. And uh, he wants us all to bow the knee. And uh -huh. that's what this is all about nowadays. Uh -huh. So uh, that's what I got uh, out of that scripture. You got anything you want to talk about on that? No. Um the thing what was coming to me when you were saying that and how he gave in to it. And it, it's just amazing. We have the different analogies of the different spirits, you know, that's in man, you know, as when you see Joseph flee from it, you know, because of his integrity. Right. And, that's a good and, one. And um, yeah. Samson not. And then you hear Paul saying, I fought a good fight, you know, are we well, willing to now, fight for what we have? Did that scripture say that um, his wife was 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 a beauty or not? <laughs> maybe she wasn't a beauty, so it wasn't so maybe hard to do she that. Wouldn't, but I don't know. Maybe maybe she did. She did. Either way, he yeah. ran. You uh, got to give him credit for yeah, that. You got to give him credit. He had, he had an opportunity. He had the fear. He yeah, had he the had fear. opportunity. Yeah. And uh, but these all these things what we're reading were written. That we don't fall into the same traps, and, and yet, yet we do. We do you we know, do. yep. And so I'm like, what I I think I use the word it's scary, yeah. you know, because we're on guard against them over there when it's happening right in the household of faith, mm -hmm. and that's that's dangerous. That's scary, but yeah, that, that's all I had to say on that. All right, all right. All right, so now we're going to move to point number three on Are You Ignorant of Satan's Devices? And you chose Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. And what I got out of that after studying it a bit, uh -huh. testing the spirit of Yahweh with the wrong spirit. Testing the spirit of Yahweh with the wrong spirit. Yes. Oh, that, that one there? Huh. Some people can do that. You can't trick so, it. So let me go ahead and read verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias of Hebrew origin with Sapphira, mm -hmm. Sapphira is a word from the Israelites, uh, his wife sold a possession from an acquired estate. Mm -hmm. Found that interesting. Mm -hmm. And he kept back through embezzlement. That was an interesting word. Yes. Part of the proceeds. His wife also being aware and conscious of it and brought a certain part of it, laid it at the apostles and ambassador for the gospel with miraculous powers at his feet. You know, today a lot of people like to call themselves apostles, but they don't have miraculous signs, wonders, 
and miracles following what they uh, say. Right. So uh, that's one of the uh, keys to trying to figure out who's an apostle and who's not. Mm -hmm. But maybe they're apostles in training. I don't know. Anyway, let's go on. Verse three. <laughs> but Peter said, and Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie, to deceive through falsehood to the Holy Spirit and keep back through embezzlement part of the price of your land yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to Elohim. I'm telling you, John, this thing, I'm telling you, he opened up, he, he let me look out of a window to look back because what they're doing is what we used to do. We would send somebody to make a delivery. And if they didn't come back right away, we would like go looking because something got to be wrong. Now, three hours has passed. And she ain't seen her husband and she's not worried about if something's wrong or not. But she goes right into the same place where he went to do the same thing that he did. I'm like, even in the sinful world, they got more sense than that. If he didn't come back right away, alarm came out. Oh, either the cops got him or he, he's got robbed. So don't answer no phone calls that's coming from him right now because you need to see him in person, you know. And so time gives you an opportunity to rethink yourself. Is this what I really want to do, you know? And I just Which made, goes back to what I was saying earlier. Uh -huh. Don't be so quick to take the bait when the pressure has been put on to you. Right. You have no legal responsibility to submit yourself to a lesser authority mm -hmm. who's trying to portray themselves as the superior authority in that moment. Know that you are a representative of the kingdom of Yahweh. You are an ambassador for that kingdom here on the earth, and you ain't going to tolerate that. You maintain jurisdictional control over the situation. Exactly. Go ahead. Exactly, because Paul wrote it. Paul said, have no fellowship with unrighteousness. Right. For what agreement has righteousness with unrighteousness? I'm, I can see this stuff so clearly. That's why it really humbles me because I see all those cords that's been broken off of me that I can sit here today, John. That it's only by his mercy that I'm sitting here so I can see just how much he's done for me. And that makes me just that much more thankful because... All three hours, you haven't seen your husband. And y'all plotted to do something wrong. And yet, you're not worried. You just, whether I see him or not, I'm just going to go right on and do it. And they ask you a question about your husband. That's your next chance to say, no, this wasn't right. I'm not going to do that. He gives us opportunity after opportunity to save ourselves from Satan's devices, from his snares. And, and that's what Peter was trying to do. Give him an opportunity give to come clean, up. repent. You have a chance to repent, but you're still going to try to think you could trick me. As an unbeliever, I was going to make this delivery, John. And just as clear, I can still hear that voice saying, this is not something you do. And it wasn't something I do, you know, because this this little voice in me been crying. He was so tired of that life. He wanted out. It's got to be a better way. And he didn't know how to get out because he was so wrapped up in it. Mm -hmm. But he was tired. And yet he said, I'll go anyway. And when he went, the trap was there. Now, it worked out for my benefit because right. I'm here today. But Satan, I know he meant it to destroy me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because in my in my voice, when they caught me, I, I cried out and I said, I know I'm not going to get out of here. I'm going to die in prison. Mm -hmm. But if I die in prison, just let me die having a right relationship with you. How many want to get it right when you keep giving Opportunity after opportunity to get it right. How long you gonna think you're gonna have 
to get it right. You might have longer than three hours or you might have less than three hours. But are you going to take that time to rethink it and repent from the way that you're going? You know, uh, the thing I get out of that is the average person. I'm not saying to puff you up, mm -hmm. um, but the average person say wouldn't say that. They say, I want out of this place. Mm -hmm. I want out of this place. That's not what you said. Right. What you said is. I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. At least let me have a right relationship. Yes. It's kind of like Solomon in a way. Yahweh had said to Solomon, because you didn't ask for riches mm -hmm. and all this other stuff and you just wanted the wisdom, mm -hmm. he gave them both. Yes. Yes. You got both. You got out of the prison and you got a right relationship with Yahweh. Yes. Yes. And I can't let that puff me up. I can't take that as an opportunity to go backwards. Right. You know? But you also could have entertained Satan's thoughts, which is, I got to find some kind of way in the flesh to get out of this place. Mm -hmm. Let me get the best attorney, blah, blah, blah. And you probably would still I, be sitting there to this day and we wouldn't know each yeah, other. And I, went, I pursued the best. I got them. Right. You know, and it was unbelievable. But at the, at the same time, his voice, remember what you said. Remember mm -hmm. what you said that I can't, I can't concoct up a story. I gotta, I gotta be guilty of this yeah, exactly. and go head on along with what I'm thinking. Right. And he he turned around. I couldn't see it. I know he turned around because I'm sitting here today. Sure. But I'm looking at these scriptures and he's showing me at the wonder how long you had to make that decision. I had a lot of years to come to that place. She only had three hours, but she had it with the knowledge that it was wrong. Mm -hmm. But in my wrongness, knowing it was wrong, didn't know what right really was because what I'm seeing, what I'm doing, they doing the same thing over there. So mm -hmm. who is right? right? Everybody good. So just let me send some money over there, a donation, and that'll clean my little heart up. You know, that was your atonement. Yes. How many people go to the priest to this day? Yeah. For him to forgive their sins. Right. And right. not not go to Yeshua. Yep. All right. Um, the next one I found to support this mm -hmm. um, testing the spirit of Yahweh in Second Corinthians 13, five. And it says, examine, entice, and scrutinize yourself as to whether you're in the faith mm -hmm. of a moral conviction based on the reliance of Messiah. Test to see if you are approved of yourselves. Do, uh, do you not know yourselves that Yahshua HaMashiach is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified, unapproved, and rejected as morally worthless. Ooh. Morally worthless. So... We are told to test Yahweh, mm -hmm. but don't test him in a negative way. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to test him in a positive way mm -hmm. so that you can find yourself to be approved. Mm -hmm. Two totally different concepts mm -hmm. altogether. You got something you want to say about that? No, I'm just looking at that word moral because that seems to be lost. It is lost. In, in, yeah. in, this, in this walk right. today, the, the moral values of people. And it weakens their integrity because their moral moral values have dissipated. Right. You know, and it's it's just it's sad. It's scary and sad that we're not examples. We're right. supposed to be a light, and yet we're taking that light and putting it up under the bed. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's sad that uh, we was talking earlier about people seeing this light that we're putting out, and yet. Not coming to that light. They're they not will. coming to us. They will. It's the light. Uh, yes. They will. Yes. Somebody got to be banging on the door. And mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to do. Yes. You know, uh, sadly, when I look out there, um, I don't want to put down teachers and stuff. It's, you know, but the stuff I see out there is a bunch of gobbledygook, mm -hmm. you know, hype, money, um, some new crazy angle on something at the end of the day does not refine your character. Prophesy to be good things. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's not a lot of good things to come mm -hmm. other than that. The time is short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the shorter it gets, the better it is. All right. So the next one I found uh, to support this Malachi three verses 10 through 11. 
And what I got out of this is a right kind of testing along mm -hmm. with the one we just read. Mm -hmm. So in verse uh, 10, it says, bring all the tithes. He's talking to the priest. Bring all the tithes, a tenth part of all, into the storehouse as a depository treasury, that there may be food in my house as a testing of metals towards me now. So, you know, when there were metalsmiths, they had to test the metal mm -hmm. for its strength. And what he's conveying in the Hebrew is, I want you to test me the same way like you test metal to see if it can hold up. Mm -hmm. Will mm -hmm. it hold this structure? Will it do exactly what it was created to do? And that's what he wants. That, and that's a rigorous testing you got to go through mm -hmm. uh, to come to that conclusion. Um, me now, as a prayerful request in this, says Yahweh of hosts, of mass of armies in heaven, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven, the third heaven as the abode of Yahweh, and pour to the point of emptying out for you so much blessing of prosperity that there will not be room enough for you to receive it. Verse 11, And I will rebuke with corruption the devourer, which is Hasatan, for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your reward of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail a miscarriage to bear fruit for you in the field, says Yahweh of hosts of the army, mass armies that are in heaven. Mm -hmm. So um, this is the right kind of testing. Mm -hmm. Again, it's about sowing something good, not something bad. Right. In this case, you're giving money for the right reason, but Safara was giving it for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. Both money situations but a totally different kind of spirit. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh doesn't expect accept lying spirits trying to test him. Right. Because he's not a man that he should lie. Right. Right. So it's important to check your spirit in at the door before you start down a road like that. Yes. So you got something you want to no. add to that? Nothing no. at that. No. Nothing, nothing. You're going to leave me hanging like that. I'll be belaboring this thing, boy, because it's, it's like a hammer right now. And it's, it's, it's hitting me. Well, you know, once the camera goes off, nobody's going to hear what you got to say. <laughs> I'm not going to add it in as an addendum. All right, let's go to the next one. So what I also found is in James chapter 1, verses 12 through 16, and a desirable outcome. So if you test Yahweh in the right way, then you get a desirable outcome. Mm -hmm. And we kind of got a little bit of that before Malachi, but let's press in here. It says in verse 12, Blessed is the man who endures fortitude and preservation of temptation. Uh, I was tempted last night on some donuts in Publix. And Sharon said, oh, no, you better not. You better not mess with that. Uh -huh. You know, don't give in to that temptation. Just keep walking. <laughs> uh -huh. Keep trucking down the aisle. <laughs> uh -huh. So I left the donuts alone. Good. Uh, that's one victory I got this week that's over the devil. It wasn't much, but it was something. Got to start somewhere. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which Yahweh has promised to those who love him. And how do you love him? Through his commandments, through obedience. Mm -hmm. Let no one say when he is tempted, enticed, and scrutinized, I am tempted of Yahweh. For Yahweh cannot be tempted of by evil, intrinsically depraved and injurious, nor does he himself entice and scrutinize anyone. But each one is tempted enticed and scrutinized when he is drawn away, dragged forth to sin by his own desires, mm -hmm. a longing for what is forbidden and enticed by being deluded and allured into entrapment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, and that's what Delilah did, huh? Yes, she did. And uh, Tamar as well. Uh -huh. and they Women was, are pretty good at that. They, they were they, enticed by their own yeah. lust. Yeah. <laughs> and they know the weakness of men. Mm -hmm. Then when desire has conceived as one who has been captured, it gives birth as a seed that produces a plant to sin. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And sin, when it is full grown or has been completely consummated, brings forth death. Ooh. So you can be betrothed to a woman, mm -hmm. but until the consummation takes place, your fate isn't sealed yet. Uh -uh. So... The sin has to be consummated. You got to do something to own this thing. Yeah. So you got something you want to say? You got one more. No, that's closing comments. Uh-uh, I'm talking about number 16. You didn't read. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Do not be. Um, uh, it's been a long week. Do not be deceived from the truth that seduces you to go astray, my beloved brethren. I, I like the end there where um, he just reiterates to us to encourage us that if you go, don't use me as your crutch to go, because you you going because of your own desires, your own lust. That what leads a man into sin. So don't use my grace and my love and right. my mercy as a right. crutch. Right, right, right. You know, and and man, I'm telling you, when I say, uh, so like the, Flip the Wilson wise, used to say, you know, the devil made me do it. Yeah, <laughs> just seeing these scriptures and seeing how you put it together, I'm uh -huh. looking through your eyes, right, and it's blessing me so mightily, you know, because it's like iron sharpening iron. It's strengthening me, and that's what Yahweh does. He strengthens. When I can't hear him, and I and I'm, and you know, I might be hearing him and don't recognize him, but mm -hmm. I will I always want to recognize his voice. But when he speaks through somebody else and just opens up this window right, right. in my mind, and I can see, you know, and then it pricks me in the heart to say, "That's him," you know. I know this this teaching, this discussion is coming from him. I know it's coming from him because it's a warning, not to anybody outside this room, but it's a warning to me sitting in this room. Uh -huh. Look at all these people. I bless them mightily. Look at all these people. I prosper, I prosper them mightily. But look how Satan got in. Be careful. Don't let, don't let that same thing come upon you. And so people say, Anthony, why you walk so tight? Why are you so serious all the time? My soul is at stake. A price was paid for me to be sitting here. So it's serious to me because somebody died because of me, because of my lifestyle. Somebody had to die. And I'm talking about, I'm, I'm talking about the one that gives life, sent his only begotten son into this world. Watch out. You can't use him as a crutch to sin. That's my thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think one point that you touch on, I think is something that even I'll say even for myself, um, take too much for granted, mm -hmm. is that somebody had to die mm -hmm. for, for me for this. Yes. And, you know, you go through life daily and you just you take a lot of things for granted. You take your own life for granted. You take Messiah for granted. You take your wife, your kids for granted, your mm -hmm. friends, you know, whatever else, your money, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and especially nowadays, we're so bombarded with so much stuff on our plate all the time. It's easy for this world to choke out those concepts. But yet that concept you're talking about is the very root and foundation for that tree. Mm -hmm. That's what holds that the rest of that tree up from the ground. Mm -hmm. That's where it gets its nourishment from. So as soon as you start forgetting the root of that olive tree, which is Yahshua HaMashiach, who supplies the nourishing sap, as it says in Romans chapter 11, to the branches, which is what we are, um, you start getting you start becoming complacent. Yes, easy. And it, it becomes a slow roast, I like to call it. Satan begins to roast you very slowly. Mm -hmm. um, he takes his time. He's not necessarily in a big rush. He knows you inside and out. He knows more or less what Yahweh is doing with you or what he has planned to do with you. And much of what he probably wanted to do to you, Yahweh didn't allow it, but you didn't know it. Right. So you can't even be thankful about that, which you didn't even know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these things are secret things in the spirit realm that are withheld from us. And so it's hard to appreciate things you're not consciously aware of. Because we're all operating so much in what I call the ancestral mind. And the ancestral mind is the mind you were born with when you came into this world. We mm -hmm. might call it the carnal mind. Right. But the ancestral mind is a filter that when we see and we hear things, it's all filtered through that filter of what you've been trained as from the time you were a child. Yes. And a lot of that stuff doesn't serve you well. And instead, you got to start seeing these things through spiritual eyes. Mm -hmm. So in order to understand Satan's devices and not be 
caught up and unaware of these devices and tools that he's using against you, you can't be ignorant. You've got to understand them. And sadly, I had one believer say, oh, I don't study spiritual warf warfare. I don't know about spiritual warfare. Well, sadly, that person, because he didn't heed what I told him to heed in studying this, it took his whole family from him. Mm -mm -mm. Not long after that. Whoa. And that's sad. Yes, it is. Because I watched this person stick his head in the ground, and because spiritual warfare didn't interest him, well, then why are you in a spiritual walk if you're not in a spiritual warfare? Mm -hmm. When you sign that contract, Satan says, you, you now in opposition to me. Before you were on my side, you're a traitor. Now I have a legal right to come after you. You damn well better know spiritual warfare mm -hmm. if you're going to sign a contract with Yahshua because that contract's in blood. Mm -hmm. And that blood is serious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that blood will teach you about Satan's practices and his deceptions that he wants to use to take you out of this world. First, he got your family. Next, he's got your life. Then what are you going to do after that when that's gone? You can't redeem it back. You don't want to find yourself coming up in the third resurrection, which is the resurrection to condemnation, mm -hmm. which is the lake of fire for mm -hmm. the second death, mm -hmm. from which you're done. Mm -hmm. At that point, you are done. Finito. It is over. There is no more resurrection from that. You will not exist anymore. You had your day in the sun here when you had it, and you thumbed your nose at it mm -mm -mm. against all the admonitions that you were told. So for those people out there that are struggling with this, you're going to need spiritual warfare more than ever, and you're really going to need to know how Satan uses various devices against you. Start with the ones that you personally know are your weaknesses. Yes. And get on your knees and ask Yahshua to help you strengthen that which is weak so that yes. you can put on the full armor of Yahweh so that you can withstand the wiles of the devil when he comes into your life. Amen? Amen. That's the end of today. We want to thank you for joining us through the Eyes of an Elder Discussions. It's been a pleasure. We pray that it's been blessing to you as it has been to us. And until the next time, Shalom. shalom.